what up super fun force and everyone watching this video thanks so much for watching and if you haven't already please consider liking and subscribing so we can keep making some awesome fun videos together now that being said i'm going to jump right into today's topic which is basically talking about the hobby of foam blasting and we're also going to focus a lot on nerf and uh, the other two prominent uh, brands are now starting to emerge in this hobby so basically quick background on me back in the 80s and 90s you know i grew up as a nerf kid and i quickly though moved into paintball and i played a lot of paintball and witnessed the entire evolution from standard pump action all the way up to the electro pneumatic blasters with like the release of the angel and then basically everything just kind of blew up from there and then in around 2005 i moved on to airsoft so i was using like tokyo marui you know uh, western arms and all these brands with very realistic replicas of firearms now since then took a break and now i'm back coming into nerf and nerf is for me the best way to enjoy playing some form of tag and oh speaking of I, you know obviously played laser tag throughout the years as well now foam blasting is the funnest for me because it's the safest and it's basically a lot more welcoming to people from all kinds of backgrounds uh you know whether it's different ages you know um you know men and women and again very safe a lot more economical because you might only need to buy you know one or two three blasters at the most some magazines and then darts they last you multiple uses versus like paintballs or like airsoft bbs you know 30 50 100 bucks to just keep restocking like almost every time you play you know like i remember we go out on a weekend to go to play woods ball for like paintball or even some of the indoor arenas and man that was like the biggest limiting factor especially as like high school kids we didn't have jobs and we got to bring like 30 we got to bring at least like 30 to 50 bucks for each of us you know we went in groups of like four to five and we would have to chip in to buy cases and then we probably would get through with those paintballs after maybe like two hours or something three hours and we'd be like man we've got to every weekend we got to come up with like a hundred dollars just to buy paintballs and to play right on top of the fact that we have to buy and maintain our paintball markers anyways lo and behold again nerf is super fun too because i like the fantasy and sci-fi element more than i do the realistic firearms now and you know with safety protection you don't have to worry too much about being you know blasted in the face and i want to start by saying please always wear face protection at least safety rated goggles but even me i'll enjoy like a full you know paintball mask it looks cool you know and stuff like that and let me tell you why because first of all if you make a simple rule and you tell people hey look no blasting in the face that's cool but remember nerf blasters don't always fire in the direction you point them in other words you could be aiming at someone's like shoulder or something like that midsection and dark and just curve and still guess what blast someone in the face not to mention when you're having fun and heat of the moment you know you might just be like blasting turning quickly and stuff and then in a split second you don't even have a chance to readjust your aim you might just inadvertently point at someone and blast them in the face so with that being said always play with you know face masks because then you could just you know enjoy blasting people not have to worry too much about like oh you know like is that aiming too much at their face or like what if this shot like curves and hits them in the face no you can just enjoy blasting each other and foam tagging knowing that full and well you guys are 100 percent protected all right cool now one more thing i want to say is i play both casually and competitively now i know there's no like actual legitimate sport at this point you know there's no like foam league or something like there is for paintball but what i mean is when we play competitive we stick to like a super stock rule set where basically we divide the blasters into three categories we go nerf mainline which will also include mega mega xl we also include the um rocket ammo and then we will do rival in its own category and then finally we'll do like dart zone slash adventure force as long as they're within that like 100 to 150 fps limit and we don't allow for internal modifications like we don't do aftermarket springs in the uh, nerf and in the rival we don't do aftermarket flywheels we don't do like uh things that would change the internals or like increase the capacity more than what was built into the blaster we do allow for additional attachments that can hold more ammo we also allow for speed loaders and again when we play with dart zone and adventure force we might allow based on the type of role the blaster plays maybe a, an upgraded spring at the most so that being said we'll then play whatever mode we agree upon which could be a combination of 1v1 where you guys are going for like a center 
point, and then you know if you blast or you you know reach the uh, the center point, you score and stuff like that. We also play just single elimination like teams, right? We also do capture the flag and defender, which is like a king of the hill, or we might even do like tactical scenarios as well. So. Really though, what I've learned is that the best experience for playing Nerf and Foam Blasting is the arena. Try to be as creative and imaginative and allow for as much variety in your arenas as possible. Whether that's like a, you know, a home with different, like plenty of like rooms, like garage areas, backyards, you know, trees. And again, a lot of different ways to, you know, hide or be strategic, especially for different game modes. Because that's what really, really makes the game amazing. All right, first things first, I recommend Modulus. If you're gonna be playing Nerf, get Modulus while you still can. And this is just an accessories pack, but the reason I'm gonna show this is the back basically explains what's on every package, is that you have modular compatibility and customization because all of these blasters are pretty much white, lime green, gray, and orange, you know, trademark Nerf colors with some extra stuff like blue here and there. But basically, you can attach a stock, you can attach a barrel extension, and they have different amounts of rails on different positions and you can add accessories. This one is solid because there's basically a blaster for every play style. There is, you know, a uh, bolt style, there's like flywheel style with a strife, and uh, you know, they have like shotgun accessories, mega accessories. They have just a plethora of stuff you guys can use to make your perfect class loadout to your play style. So highly recommend it. And the greatest thing of all is that this stuff pretty much all carries on to the newest and most current Nerf mainline series, and that's Elite 2.0, which we're gonna get to in just a second. My only wish is that if Hasbro Nerf team are listening, give us barrels that have twice the diameter on the inside, as opposed to a standard Nerf barrel, because that way it won't negatively affect the blast of your Nerf dart. Now, we've seen this because, you know, with the Scravenger, for example, that gives you a barrel, if you could see my review on my loadout, for my ghoul grinder, that gives you the option of adding that barrel with a large inner diameter that won't affect the performance of the dart negatively. And we've seen that when they've made the uh, Nerf Mega Centurion into the Thunder Strike by giving you the extendable barrel, but it's all basically just for show and it's hollow. Because one blaster I would recommend you don't get is like the Nerf Long Strike, which they released in the Modulus as a, you know, reskin, because that thing looks like a super cool sniper rifle, but the barrel and stuff is so long that it doesn't actually help your, your blasting at all. Now, that being said, I have tested out plenty of combinations and barrels can help, but only generally the shorter ones. You don't want to add like five different barrel extensions because that'll for sure negatively affect your performance. So, you know, above all things, obviously try out and test your combination and then you'll know if it works and what works best with what blaster you're using because again, depending on the way the blaster is set up, you know, the uh, internal length of the barrel already inside. Oh, that takes us to Elite 2.0. I'm gonna show you a blaster actually here. And uh, this one was covered in my review. It's the uh, Phoenix and basically 2.0 tried to take the Elite series, some of the blasters that were released during that line, combine it with the modularity of the modulus and gave you even more rails to attach. So the Phoenix in and of itself has one here, one here, one on top, one on the bottom. So that's quite a lot. Oh, and then one right here on the back, obviously. So that is a tremendous amount of rails to, you know, spruce up. But again, Hasbro, you gotta start releasing more stuff. I mean, we're running out of options. There's really like, when you look at the blaster, you have to start going to the third party and the, uh, you know, 3D printing customization scene, which is cool but it'd be nice to have some more creative stuff. I mean, if I work for Hasbro or whatever, if I could give them some of my ideas, I would, because I have wonderful ideas, both thematically, form and function, just to make the blasters that much more fun and customizable. So Elite 2.0, I only recommend a few blasters from this. Really quick, I would say the Phoenix, if you want to get a flywheel blaster, battery powered, semi-auto, the Commander, uh, the Trio. I think the Echo is okay, but at this point, just remember that these blasters uh, they cannot be opened up, repaired, or customized, or anything like that. But at this point, some of them are a good value, but some of them perform worse than their original Elite counterparts. Like some of them that had Slam Fire don't have Slam Fire anymore. For example, just make sure you research the blaster if you don't see it on my channel, because then that means obviously I didn't really um, find it to be useful 
uh, compared to what's already been out there. So Elite 2.0 is what's currently out there on the market. A few good, uh, you know, selections, and you can still attach your modulus gear to it. All right, another super fun thematic line, Zombie Strike, my favorite. Um, because this is quite large and heavy, so I don't want to flip this up into the air and damage this. Uh, basically, Zombie Strike obviously is themed about these characters here taking on zombies. Now, again, Hasbro, Team Nerf, if you're listening, you guys should definitely create media to back this stuff up. Comic books, cartoons, again, I would definitely have some awesome ideas. But that would help, you know, just like how anime, you know, Beyblade and things like that have storylines and characters that back up the product. Zombie Strike and just Nerf in general really needs that to keep it even at a higher level than where it is right now. But anyways, this stuff here is super thematic, plenty of gimmicks for you to you know, research and discover what you might like to play with. But again, much of it is very competitive as well as casual. Just gotta think about, again, your setup, your loadout, how you customize it. Because several of them actually have end strike compatibility. This one only has the barrel, but it you know, has a rail up here and a rail down there. So there are things you can do with this and hint, hint, I have a loadout for this one coming soon. So. If you want something that is, again, more fantasy, cartoony, horror, sci-fi, this also has like a survival theme to it. I always say like MacGyver, uh, basically get some Zombie Force stuff because it's getting pricey and super rare. This is Mega, which I have one blaster for. This one here is the Talon. There are some great choices. The only thing that's problematic with Mega is you don't have much options for magazine capability. They do have a Strife comparable, comparable blaster called the Moto Strike, which looks great fires pretty nicely, but it's like one of the only ones other than like the Centurion that has like a magazine and they don't even sell additional mags. So it's very difficult to, after you fire that, reload it. You know what I mean? But uh, for example, the Twin Shock, I think is highly, highly recommended. The Megalodon, the Mastodon, the ones that have external reloading capabilities through either cylinders or just open ports. Those ones can definitely be worth playing with for sure. This one for me is a great backup because in case you use different rules or different um, bonuses and benefits for mega darts or i mean it's just this one in, in this case with the accurate strike dart shoots very powerfully shoots very straight distant and again you can control uh or you can contain two additional accurate strike mega darts on here including the one in the chamber so to speak or the barrel so this is kind of like a jolt that has two ammo holders on it very very nice the only thing that i'll say with this one well I'll say that for my video when you guys see my loadout with the Mega. But I definitely recommend looking at the Mega. Uh, Mega XL, I'll put up a picture for that. But basically, I got the Boom Dozer, and it's still a young line right now with only three blasters, uh, three blasters available in 2021. So let's see what they come out with next in 2022 if they keep that going. I think it's a great kind of intermediate and in-between of a Mega Dart and a Rocket, obviously. Kind of gives you the best of both worlds. Will while still keeping Mega and Rockets useful for their own purposes and in their own rights. Cool, lastly, I'm gonna talk about Rival here. You're gonna see a sneak peek of how I'm customizing my loadout for Rival. Rival to me is the best. Bar none, Nerf has ever done, and nobody can touch Rival and this uh, you know specific yellow foam ball round. As much as I like Dart Zone and Adventure Force, the stuff that they've released to compete is okay, but again, I would not get anything other than Rival to play with this particular ammo. Such an amazing selection of blasters to choose from. I hope they keep it coming back, you know, like they release some more like Percy's and, you know, just more like reskins or update them a little bit more. Uh, just keep the line going. We did see the last year, they, they did the curve shot line. The Helix was another shotgun, 30 round capacity, which looked promising, but unfortunately, because it's gravity fed, the uh, the issue is that it doesn't, always load properly so you get a lot of dry fire shots and as they release more spring powered ones which i think are fantastic uh think of a ways to keep the internal and the uh, speed loading and everything like that as efficient as possible that way you can still kind of keep up against the uh, hopper fed blasters but these ones also make wonderful sidearms you know this one in for example in this case holds eight inside you just pop them in here rival is super fun it's definitely for the older players uh it's more for the speed ball if you want something similar to paintball in terms of like a, uh, a more like straightforward arena which is okay like i don't mind playing like that sometimes but playing with rival in 
different environments and stuff like that is super super fun all right last year we're going to talk about adventure force and dart zone now adventure force basically this is the walmart exclusive brand and basically when either primetime toys aka dart zone releases a blaster for walmart when x shot or busby toys releases a blaster it gets branded under adventure force overall adventure force still is pretty cohesive uh, they all fire usually around 80, 90, even 100 FPS. So they're, on average, more powerful than Nerf Blasters, which is why I put them in their own class. Uh, I primarily really, really like the Dart Zone ones. Here's an example for, for uh, this purpose here. This is the Villainator Slam Fire with a cylindrical drum. Nothing Nerf has compared to this. This is the funnest way to play with Slam Fire with such a high capacity. Now, Nerf has good Slam Fire blasters that are fun. Twin Shock, Rampage, for example. Uh, Artemis from the Rival. But uh, this one with the capacity for long darts uh, is unmatched. Powered by PT-DZ Dart Zone. If you look closely, then that's how you'll tell. But upon first glance, you might not really have the eye for it yet. But over time, you can tell what is Busby Toys, what is Dart Zone, what is, um, you know, X-Shot. But definitely, uh, you can't go wrong with most of what Adventure Force offers because it's unique, um, it's really, really fun. And while they don't have compatibility with each other, like the Adventure Force uh, Busby Blasters use a different rail than the Dart Zone ones, there's still some ability to mix and match, and maybe we'll see more of that in the future. So, for example, this one here has a stock. So, for example, the uh, Adventure Force Spectrum from Dart Zone can swap stocks with this but you couldn't do that with a Busby one. But Adventure Force is awesome. And then the last one on the um, Adventure Force is, of course, the uh, Nexus Pro and the Max Striker line. Uh, basically, these are the straight out the box, 150 FPS blasters, twice as much as a standard Nerf blaster, which on average, the, um, the end strikes are about 70, but the rivals can go to about 90 to about 100. So that's why rival also is, is really awesome. But uh, these ones are amazing. The best springers on the market you can get for stock. Definitely a lot of aftermarket customization capabilities. They just released a Mark III, which is a semi-auto slash full-auto motorized flywheel blaster. Now, that one, maybe I will get it in the future. We'll see. But I'm not super sold on that. I would rather have, honestly, a Spectrum and either a Max Striker or a Nexus Pro because, for me, having full-auto is not really necessary especially since you can shoot even you know springers and the the, the spectrum and other semi-auto flywheels pretty much as fast as you can shoot other full autos unless you again do some aftermarket modding so in that regard though i mean if you want to go straight to the top if you want to play with all older players like adults or really responsible and careful you know teenagers and stuff like that then you can definitely step up to dart zone pro and uh, this is something that you can play with a lot more of a distance. Again, if you want to play in like forests or you want to play in larger open areas from time to time, which again is super fun, uh, this stuff is definitely going to be able to hit its mark at very far distances. So there you guys go. Uh, foam blast in action is super fun. Again, as someone who's played years and years of paintball and airsoft, it's fun to be able to get back into this kind of sport game hobby but from the foam perspective. Uh, there's also a huge third-party aftermarket of people making all kinds of custom 3D print, uh, printed blasters and stuff, but I kind of shy away from that because I'm, I'm more into the, uh, again, the fantasy, the theme, uh, the kind of the toy nature to it, the color, the fun, and uh, you know things that are kind of mass-released, uh, factory-produced, but that doesn't mean there aren't uh, still really good third-party, you know, 3D printed and indie blasters out there. I just want to kind of stick with Nerf and uh, Dart Zone slash Adventure Force. But anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you getting back into Nerf? How long have you been into it? What are your favorite brands? What are your favorite blasters? Uh, how do you guys play? Uh, it's all fun, and it should be uh, a wonderful sport enjoyed by everybody. All right, guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Don't forget, like and subscribe so I can bring you some more stuff that will always be fantastic. And don't forget, keep it fair, say it, pray it, spread that love. Be thankful, be positive, and Captain G-G-Gamesta, we coming back at you. Peace!